أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه نعم إن شاء الله we will continue from where we stopped this morning and uh, yesterday we were discussing about the deeds the purity of our deeds and how these deeds can help and make us to witness the mercy of allah and to be granted al jannah and in comparison with the mercy of allah our deeds are not enough to make us enter al jannah just like i explained that is the mercy of allah upon us that makes it possible for us to enter al jannah may allah make it easy for us allahumma ajirna min al nar allahumma adkhilna al jannah now inshallah we'll also continue from there allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran where the khazanatul jannah the angel in, angels in charge of al jannah will be hacking the people of al jannah may allah count us among them salamun alaykum tibutum fa dkhuluha khalidi the mercy the peace of allah is upon you tibutum be glad tibutum be good tibutum be happy fadkhuluha then enter the al jannah khalidin and you be you be there forever tibutum could also mean tibutum you have done righteousness you have been righteous you have been pure you did pure, pure deeds so fadkhuluha because of the purity of your deeds because of the purity of your heart fadkhuluha there is a, in arabic language in nah there is uh, alfa that we call alfa usadabiya fa that causes something so allah says tibutum you've done something which is good you have done righteous deed fadkhuluha then after doing those righteous deeds enter al jannah khalidin you will be there forever so it means the entry of al jannah comes through righteous deed comes th- uh, through pure heart pure deeds and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse of the quran specifically in surah to an-nur verse 26 allah says al khabithatu lil khabithin wal khabithuna lil khabithat wa at-tayyibat lit tayyibin والطيبون للطيبات اولئك مبرؤون مما يقولون لهم مغفرة ورزق كريم in this verse scholars of uh, a tafsir quranic exegesis they give explanation to this verse and they came up with some sabab nuzul like the reason for the revelation of this verse let's give the meaning first allah says al khabithat the people that are impure when it comes to slandering so it is it is it is of, is of two types the people of slander uh, uh, slandering or scandal or backbiting or ill statement lil khabithun they are for the people of ill statement their their women is for the, the, uh, the it's, it's for the men like them i think we understand what, what i'm saying those people who say ill things who say evil statement in, in terms of uh, women they should go for men with the same quality wal wal khabithun you see how allah brought the verse al khabithat lil khabithin so it shouldn't be that it's only women that are 
in charge of heel statement. Allah brings it again. Wal khabi soon. They are male too that are of evil statement. Lil khabi that they should go for the uh, females that are for, uh, that are of evil statement. What tajibad? They are females that are pure when it comes to speech. When they speak, they speak that which is good. When they don't, they don't, they don't backbite. They don't, you know, they don't slander. They are, they are pure when it comes to, in, in, in relation with people. Let tajibin, they should go for pure heart people. For me, as regards men too. What tajibun and let tajibat. And men that are pure should go for the pure women. So, Another way which scholars gave meaning to this is regarding marriage. Pure women should marry pure men. Evil women should marry evil men. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, astonishing and surprising if a Muslim that is praying, is five daily prayers, that is observing salah, that is good, then marry someone of, maybe among the mushrikun. It, 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 it makes no sense. In all, in all, all ramifications. Except the mushrik, that does believer, the idol worshiper, are submitted in, uh, herself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she has become a Muslim. You know, uh, Ustaz uh, Abdul Malik was saying something regarding uh, al-fiqh yesterday and he, he, he made mention of one verse that إِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ najas They are dirty. What? Is it their body that is dirty? No, it is their heart. Of course, we eat with them, we play with them, we dine with them. It's not their body that is dirty. In mushrikun and najas, their heart is not pure. So if a Muslim whose heart is pure goes and marry someone whose heart is impure, you know there's a problem. Al khabithat lil khabithi, wal khabithun lil khabithat. So you have to look at yourself, okay? The kind of person, if even as we are here, we have the choice of wives, okay? I can't marry this person because. I, I, I am I am a Muslim. She is not a. I, I will have problem when I'm. So that is how it should be. And as a woman too, she has a choice. The the first thing that uh, scholars, even this way, I'm going to round it up. We we'll begin the seerah of uh, um, Aisha radiyallahu anha because this uh, verse talks about our mother. This the the scandal, the the slandering, the backbiting, all the. The evil things, the mushrikun, the munafiqun, they did to Aisha radiallahu anha. They defamed her. They were saying ill things about her. And that, that thing they did, they, want, they, they wanted to cause like, like ula balu in the community of Muslims, especially to the, to the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, eh? like ula balu, mm -hmm. like the problem, like riots, chaos. chaos. So, what they did, because they know Aisha radiallahu anha is a, is a relative. She's a relative to Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. She, she was a wife to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, the top sahabi, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, wa hafdalu hadhi al-umma ba'da nabiyya, the best of man, of men, after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this umma, in this nation Islam, is Abu Bakr. Okay, they said, okay, if they get Aisha, they will get Abu Bakr. They will get Prophet Muhammad. But in, indeed, what they did, it caused a chaos that time. Indeed, it caused it. But inshallah, will get the, will give us the, the, the narration properly. Uh, what was I saying is that a man who intends marrying a pure wife must also check himself. Am I pure? And, as well as a woman. It's not that you want to get married to someone who is pure, but you yourself, you're not pure. And one of the, one of the, the first things of marriage is the choice of wife. If you marry wrongly, 
as a man, then I'll be la. That will be pro problem. Problem in the home, problem among the children. And if you marry wrongly as a woman too, there's a problem. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ad-dunya mata'a wa khayru mata'iha al-mabhatu saliha. Life is enjoyment. And the best of the enjoyment in life is when you get married to a good wife. I will round it up with this. A man went to a scholar and uh, he wanted to seek an advice regarding his family, how he's going to, you know, relate with them, how he's going to bring, bring, nurture them on the path of his life. Then he went to that scholar. Scholar, I, I want you to give me an advice regarding tabiyatul awlad, how to bring my children. The scholar asked him, are you married? He said, yes. And the scholar chased him away. He said, the advice cannot be useful because you are you're already married. The advice can only be useful when you are not, you are not, so you have chosen what uh, you want to, you have chosen your family already. You can't be asking question after, uh, you can't be asking question after the deed has been done. So the choice of wife, the choice of husband determines the quality of our marriage. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant us the best. We that we have married, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant us the, the, the best of children. Uh, just like uh, our Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam, prayed for his children then. Uh, oh Allah, make me be someone who will observe salah and from amongst my offspring. So this is the prayer we need to be praying. And for those who are yet to marry, uh, we should be praying, Allah, uh, Rabbana, hablana min azwajina. It's not even those that are yet to marry, even we that we are married. Rabbana, hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina kurrata ayun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. This prayer is, is very good. For married, for the your married is very good. Because either you are married, you don't know what Allah will grant you as a child. Allah granted the, the Prophet of Allah children that they didn't follow their parents. Nabi Yuna Nuh alayhi salam, his, his child, you know, disobeyed him. Eh? Lut. Eh? Imra'ta Nuhin wa imra'ta Lut. Kanat ha tahta abdayni min ibadina wa khanata huma. Subhanallah. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the goodness of life and the hereafter. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika shalallahu ilaha illa an. Astaghfiru wa atubiya. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اللهم رحمتك أرجو فلا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين وأصلح لي شأني كله لا إله إلا أنت